now the lesson chapter 5 principles of inheritance and regulation some important terms we have to learn in this lesson genetics now what is genetics genetics is the branch of science which deals with heredity or inheritance of characters so it is how characters can be transmitted from one generation to the next. So the next term, heredity. Now what is heredity? Heredity is the process by which characters are transmitted across generations. That is the process by which the specific characters, features that are present in an individual can get transmitted from one generation to the next, from the parent to the offspring, and again the offspring will one day become a parent, and from that particular parent to the next generation, next offspring, the process whereby it gets transmitted from one to the next is known as heredity. And the study of this entire process is the branch of science that is genetics. Then variation. Now what is variation? Variation means differences in traits of an individual. Like the traits, it varies. Okay, that is, uh, you can observe in your own family, you have siblings from the same parents. Your sibling, you are different. Your physics, your, how you appear, how you look, it also differs, varies from one to the other. Even your behavior, your way, it, it differs from one person to other. These differences, they are known as variation. And variation is created during the process of cell divisions. Cell division, that is meiosis. You, we have already learned about it earlier. Then characters. What are characters? Here we have been using the word character. Now characters are those observable specific features present in a individual okay the specific features that are present in any individual for a plant say for example a rose plant a rose plant the specific characters in it will be its leaves are green in color it has prickles its flowers are of different variety of colors some red some pink some orange so those are the characters like say in a cat in a cat what are the characters that you see external characters here i'm talking about okay it's fur it's a furry animal it has whiskers uh, it has round black or brown eyes okay so those are the characters that we can observe in humans the different characters that make a human so those are the characters now characters not necessarily it has to be external internal characters also like say the type of enzyme produced in your body like the type of hormone produced in your body the hemoglobin content in your body those are also characters that also are characters traits traits are alternate forms of characters now character is a specific feature like say your eye color Okay, the color of your eye, it is a character. The eye color can be brown, it can be black, or it can be sometimes even green. So those are the traits for the character of eye color. Okay, that is the alternate forms of a character. Height, say for example, height is a character. Some individual can be tall, some can be short, or some can be medium height. So those are the traits for the character of height. In a plant, say the flower color. Flower color is the character. The flower color in some, it can be pink, it can be uh, purple, it can be red. Those are the traits for the color of flower, the character color of flower. The next uh, term, haploid. Now, haploid, what does it mean? It, is, it means a single set of chromosomes. One set of chromosomes, just as in humans we have 23 chromosomes, which makes up the haploid number. Diploid, 
two sets of chromosome, two n. Like in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. That is the diploid number. Then coming to genes. Now, what are genes? We have been hearing very often of these terms, genes. Now, gene or genes, these are the hereditary units. That means these are the units. These are something which is present in all living organisms responsible for the expression of characters. Those are genes. Now, alleles. Just as a character can have different traits, likewise, a gene can have different alleles, the different forms of the genes. Like say, for example, I'll try to relate here characters, genes, traits, alleles, okay? Now, uh, for a particular character, say eye color, a gene is responsible. Okay, that is the hereditary unit. A gene is responsible for the character eye color. Now, eye color, it can be again, you go to specific ones, it can be brown, okay, or it can even be black. In some people, brown eye color, in some people, black eye color. Brown eye color will be controlled by one type of gene responsible for eye color. Black eye color will be controlled by another type of gene, same, belonging the same category, eye color gene. So the group is one here, the genes for eye color, but again they have subtypes. Those subtypes will be called as alleles. Then genotype. Genotype genetic composition of an individual that is the genetic makeup of an individual or of the character a particular character what is the genetic makeup that is genotype then phenotype will be the physical component like say the eye color the same example i'm referring to the eye color that is the phenotype that is something which is observable which you can see which we can make out. That is a phenotype. Now some genes, some allele will be responsible for a particular eye color. That, whatever is responsible, that will be the genotype. So every phenotype will have a genotype. Every genotype will have a phenotype. So these are some of the terms, okay, which we have to be, uh, which we should be familiar with. Now, coming next to uh, the person who started with genetics, Gregor Johann Mendel. But was born in 1822 and lives till 1884. With the picture of Gregor Johann Mendel, why is he important? Why do we study about him? Because we consider him to be the father of genetics. Because he was the person who first demonstrated the mechanism of transmission of characters from one generation to another. He was the person who first walked on as to how a particular character may be carried over from one parent, from a pair of parents to the next generation, so on and on. Now, a little bit about uh, Mandel. He was born in Austria. So we, he is Austrian by birth. He studied philosophy okay, in Austria itself. Then later, after completing his studies, he joined a monastery, Augustinian monastery at Brunn. Brunn is now in Czech Republic. Okay? He joined the monastery as a monk. And from the monastery itself, he was sent to University of Vienna to study botany and physics. Later, he became a teacher in physics. In the same monastery, he started teaching physics okay, to his disciples. But while he was teaching physics, okay, he was observing the garden plants. 
Then he came across pea plants. He was very intently observing those plants and then he was curious as to how a character can be transmitted, how a purple flower plant will again produce a purple colored flower plant. How was it possible? How was it happening? These questions troubled him and so he started carrying out certain experiments, hybridization experiments with pea plants and he did that for seven years and later he came to some conclusions which we now learn as which we now learn as Mandel's laws of inheritance or the simply as laws of inheritance so those are the things we'll be learning about okay because Mandel was the first person who studied and who gave out all these uh, features so with due respect to Mandel we need to learn a little bit about it. Now Mandel experimented with pea plants. Okay, Mandel experimented with pea plants. So these are the pea plants. Okay, this is the picture that I'm showing here. Now, why did he select only pea plants? Why did he not select any other plant? Because pea plants are annual. Okay, within a year. Okay, you can study, you can let it, you can sow the seeds, they will grow, they will bear flowers, they will produce seeds and then they will die out. Again, the next generation, we can start within that year. So they are annual with a short life cycle. So it becomes easy. In seven years, he could study seven to eight life cycles. So when you study many generations at a stretch, continuously, then only we can come to some Concrete conclusions. So that becomes possible with pea plants. The flowers of pea plants are bisexual. Both male and female parts are present in the in the uh, plants. So, okay, male and female parts, gynoecium and drosium are present. So it becomes they're not unisexual. You don't have to uh, grow two types of plants. Here a single plant will have both male and female parts. So they are self-pollinating because both male and female parts are present within them, then we can also carry out cross-pollination. Easy. Artificially, we can do cross-pollination. They produce a large number of seeds. You all are familiar with it. So large number of seeds means consequently large number of plants also can be produced. They're very convenient to maintain, to handle, to grow, to, they're available easily. And as yet, most importantly, it has a good number of contrasting traits. <coughs> good number of contrasting traits means here they have certain characters, some features, okay, like uh, like say the height. Height of the plant is a character. There are two traits, contrasting traits, totally opposite. Either some of them will be tall or they will be short. Flower which is a character can be can have two traits. The flower can be yellow, can be white or can be purple, two types. So that way they have a good number of contrasting traits. So these are some of the many reasons <coughs> why Mendel selected pea plant and why he did not go for any other plant. Okay, so these are some of the points. Now what are the characters in garden pea plant which Mandel selected for his experiments? Okay, which are the characters? Out of so many characters, he selected seven. Seven of them in pea plants to carry out his experiments. He selected seven characters, that is flower color, plant height, seed color, seed shape, pod color, pod shape, and flower position. Okay, he selected flower color, which is a character. For flower color, there were two alternating traits. The flowers were either purple or white. So flower color is the phenotype. Okay, is a phenotype for garden pea plants. Purple is a type, is a variety, or white blue. Likewise, plant height is another character which he selected, he considered, which can either be tall 
or shops. The alternative trays. Seat color, which are either yellow or green. Seat shape, which could be either round or wrinkled. Pot color, green or yellow. Now pot, what is the pot? Pot is the entire fruit. Okay, or pea. Okay, the ovary, it develops into the pod. So the pod colors, when mature, they could either be green, it will remain as green, or they may turn yellow. Pod shape, which were either inflated or maybe constricted the flower. Then flower position, <coughs> position means where the flower was born. They could be either axial on the side branches or maybe terminal at the tip. So these were seven characters that Mandel considered, selected to carry out his experiments. Now, the point to remember here is, it is not that the same plant will bear both purple and white flower. The, a plant which bears purple flowers means it will be only purple flower. A plant which bears white flower, it will be a white flower. So among pea plants, we could see two types of plants, some bearing purple, some bearing white. Likewise, some were tall, some were dwarf. So when carrying out the experiment, he selected plants with contrasting traits. If he selected one with purple, the other one was with white, maybe flower, or maybe he took a tall plant and a dwarf plant. So likewise, he carried out experiments with all these seven characters <coughs> separately, considering one at a time, with the experiments are then called as mono-hybrid experiments. Mono, mono means single. When you took one character at a time, those are called as mono-hybrid experiments. And when you took two characters at a time, those were called as dihybrid experiments. So those are the experiments, mono-hybrid, dihybrid, the laws following them, which we will have to learn in our next class. Okay, today I'll not go into the experiment. We will do it tomorrow, the next day. Okay.